Hi everyone, this is Cheryl Stark. This is my second uh, video of the day. I'm doing my second tutorial ever. Um, and the tutorial is going to be on this little uh, folder that I made the other day. It's made from three envelopes. Um, all the papers I'll be using today are from TLC Creates Vintage. I'm using her basic coffee dyed basics and um, and her uh, wild animal um, wild forest animal postcards and part of the autumn collection. Um, so this is what it looks like. It just has a flap. I put a little bulb pin on this on the edge here with uh, an eyelet and a bead dangle and a policy envelope closure. There's a couple of um, little faux hinges and inside are three envelopes which I have sewn in to the um, to the to the envelope closure so you end up with a pocket here a pocket here a pocket here and I put a little pocket on the back here for some tags and just the back as a picture you can add pockets here in this other um, in this other one I made um, pockets I made pockets in a double, dual pocket in the front and a side tuck pocket in the back this is made with um, Tsunami Rose uh, botanicals but it's basically the same I was just goofing around one day and thought it would be fun to make something that looked kind of like a little briefcase but very much on the grungy side. Um, I got this idea basically on um, my friend Moira McDonald. Hi Moira. She was doing one of Gail Agostinelli's um, faux front envelopes a week or so ago or last week and I was just thinking you know how neat it would be to kind of tweak it and change that just a little bit and make it on the grungy side. I love these papers. I use these papers for almost everything. I make tags on them. I use them for backgrounds. Um, all kinds of things. I love these papers. They come in handy in my junk journals. Um, and you can either you can sew this as I did in this one. I sewed around the outside and I sewed the envelopes. Or you can just glue it. This one I glued. Um, it doesn't really matter if you don't have a sewing machine you can do that I won't be sewing on camera our sewing machine weighs about 60 70 pounds it's a uh, sewing machine that's made for uh, sewing sails and canvas on a boat I've lived on a boat for the last 12 years so I'm not very easily moved around that's for sure okay so let's get started um, I have an extra sheet of paper here what I did what I used for the outside was I used two eight eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper um, I folded them and glued them face uh, wrong side to wrong side white side to white side and I cut off an inch just a little over an inch off the top because the envelopes I'll be using are um, Five by seven. I don't know what is that an A7 or A6 or whatever it is. I glued three envelopes together. Uh, I glued the flap to this one and the flap to this one, and then I cut the flap off of the end one. I added. I used a scrap piece of. You can use use the cut off flap. I used it as a reinforcement hinge on where I will be sewing it into as the signature as in um, this this is the two pieces of eight and a half by eleven I glued together um, distress the edges and so the envelope is going to sit inside here so I wanted a little extra um, reinforcement because I'm going to actually sew the signature in with a three stitch three hole pamphlet stitch I grunged up uh, around the outsides of all the envelopes front and back because I'm going to put, put cards on the front and back so I grunged up around all sides and uh, this is gonna this is gonna sit in here like this 
I'm going to sew it in and it will sit in there like that. I'm going to glue in the pictures I've designated to go inside here, which I put them all together. all together and I punched a hole in them I punched a hole in them with my inch and a half punch so all of the all of the the holes would be in the and the, the half holes would be in the same spot so I'm going to um, now that I've I've reinforced the spine on I've reinforced the spine on the envelopes I've reinforced these the cover by putting two two of them together I'm going to glue these in I'll glue these in right now and then we can sew them into the signature into um, into the book so I'll do that right now if you guys end up having any questions um, like I said this is this is this is an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper two sheets of paper glued together and I cut off uh, just a little over an inch strip so these envelopes which I got at Walmart they're just white envelopes it might even you know whatever you have around um, would be great to use but I cut off I used the ones I got at Walmart and I just inked them up a little oh that's good Cheryl that's really good and you gotta be careful not to glue the front edge of where you're gonna use the envelope portion where you're gonna use it as a pocket that would be just silly and I almost just did that. So I kind of set it in here. So you want to be able to make sure that this stays open so you can use the envelope portion. So I glue that down on three on three sides, trying not to get over too far depending on which type of envelopes you use. been inspired by many lovely ladies who uh, belong to the junk journal community and this has been really a great joy for me to do this kind of thing. I've made a lot of gifts. I just made my sister a, a beautiful uh, sunflower journal for her birthday and um, my daughter's mother-in-law I made her a journal kind of like a brag book journal with pictures of our grandkids in it. So, really, really enjoy this. So right now I'm just gluing the pictures I want or whatever kind of images you want on, on your envelopes. Glue them into the, and then I will sew it in got some waxed waxed linen uh, thread that I use for sewing and where you where you do the cutouts you want to you want to distress a little bit so it's not quite a stark white um, and then I've got one more here I even have one envelope I I started to emboss. I was embossing some envelopes. And these are just some cheap envelopes I got at Walmart. Right. Fairly thin, so adding the cardstock. Well, that's silly. Oops. This one goes on the front. Like this. Adding some cardstock to these envelopes actually makes them a little bit more usable because they're very very thin I don't think they're I don't even know if they're even 20 pounds I mean it's very very thin paper and at this point if you were going to sew you could sew around the outside and zigzag stitch these on for the purposes, of, like I said, for the purposes of the tutorial, I'm not going to sew them around on each on each one. So right now, I will put 
the cover on my glue so that doesn't dry up on me. And take my awl. Poke three holes. Poke three holes. I'll try to get them actually. I'll use my book that I use. I learned this little trick from Gail. Gail Ag Agostinelli. I um, hope I'm saying that right. I probably just butchered your name, Gail. I'm sorry. But I take it and I lay it in a book and I set it down in the groove and just poke a hole with my awl. book comes in handy for that. <clears throat> so now I measure out my twine, my linen wax linen thread, two, three, to get approximately the right length I need to do a pamphlet stitch. out which one I want for the cover. It doesn't really matter. I like the grungier the better. So I will take this. Oh, I probably should have take my awl, poke it through. There we go. center hole the top and back through the center. Pull that tight. Make myself a square knot. Over right, right over left. My husband always says, Don't tie a granny knot. We've been sailors for the last 12 years, so he gets very angry if I tie a granny knot. So now we have that sewn in. So now would be the time. Now, um, in order to make the flap that comes over the front. I took another piece of paper from the same from the same collection, the coffee dyed basics paper, and I cut this three inches. I cut this three inches, and I scored. I figured out how long I wanted the flap to be. I cut it three inches wide and seven inches tall. And I scored at a half inch, uh, uh, three quarters of an inch, and then I folded on those score marks. So it made kind of like a, a little gusset there on the top. Round the corners, round the corners for the front of the flap. And then I take the flap and I glue. 
I glue it to with the score mark just on the outside of the envelope cover. So I'll do that. I should probably, I don't think I distress these edges. Sorry, I tried to get all the distressing done before, but so y'all wouldn't have to watch me do that. And my little makeup sponge that I use for distressing, because I don't have a Tim Holtz tool. So, take my glue, and I'll put it along the edge here of the flap. Then I take the, the back portion and line it up, just coming inside the score mark so it doesn't bind up on me, because that would make me very upset. So, there we are. I'm going to press it down. You can always go back and distress this part some more if you don't like the stark whiteness of it. Or you can actually um, cut another piece of paper, cut another piece of paper the same size and make an inside flap cover. Okay, so now um, it's time for the crocodile. I'll have to decide where I want, where I made, I cut out two circles of the same uh, actually three circles each of the same paper. I glued them together to make a substantial button to go as a closure. I'm going to use the 3 16 hole punch and try to get it in the center, which I never do, and try to get this one in the center. Okay, so now I'll close this up see exactly where I want my, I'll take my pencil and eyeball it, that looks about center to me, and make a circle, then I'll decide where I want the bottom one, how far away I want it. This grid paper, this graph paper, um, part of the coffee dyed basics is pretty nice because it lets you line things up pretty good. Okay, so I'll set those aside. And I'll punch this hole with my crocodile. And this hole I will punch with my awl. Hopefully not impaling myself in the process. Because I'm good at that. Sometimes I'll little put a little piece of foam behind it. But more often than not, I can't find the foam and I'm too lazy. Okay, I'll grab my brads. Why did I set my brads? Okay, decide what color brad I want for this. I think I'll go with the, the gunmetal brad. Put that in and open it up. Pop one in. And open it up. And at this point, let me put these away before I knock them down. I glue, um, you could either do the separate cover, which is not a bad idea. Maybe I'll do that. That is. See, that's two, just shy of two and a quarter. So I'll use my small whiskers and hopefully I'm 
We'll make it just shy of two and a quarter. being my, my small paper cutter. I don't have an extendable arm on it, so I'll cut it to size. And then I'll round the corners. Ink it up. Sometimes I usually just use a little circle disc to cover up the brad, you know, to make it look a little bit more finished. But I think this will look nice and it'll add a little bit more reinforcement to the envelope if I just glue this on. Hope you all are liking this. I'm this is my second tutorial ever, and I don't know. I'm hope I'm not boring you all. Hope I'm explaining things properly. Okay, so I'm gonna try and line that up as best as I can. I'm trying to miss that score line again because I don't want it to bind up my. And then, if it's not exactly perfect, ink takes care of that. That's what I like about inking things up. Get a little bit more glue in there. This glue dries very quickly. It's art glitter glue, dries clear. It's great stuff. I like the fine tip. Or it just just doesn't let me glob on the glue like I tend to with the Fabri-Tac. So okay, now we'll cover this up. See, it does. I cut an, a circle, a one-inch circle from the paper that I used earlier, the leftover one-inch strip that um, did not get used to cover the envelopes. So I'll just cover that up and glue this down. Doesn't really matter because this I was this you can cover up with a pocket. Okay. So there's that. Now to make the hinges using that that one inch strip that um, I cut from the edge of the paper it was on this edge of the paper. I made some little three inch. I cut it. Um, I cut it them three inches long and I'm just going to fold them over the edge here try to get them like I said with this graph paper it's kind of nice that so try to get them about even look at there's that one and that one try to fold them to that or you can fold them in half depending on how much of the front area you want to cover up I've already cut these rounded the corners and inked them up now I'm just going to glue them on that's why it has to be done after you sew in the signature because otherwise you're covering up the and the brads are they'll hold them on but it's just, the brads are just put on to look decorative basically so let me see I'm going to try to come up as far as I came up with them so there we go glue this one down I'll put the cover on this glue
then I'll take my my awl this time I'll use my little piece of foam so I don't stab myself and I'll kind of and I'll just eyeball where I want the brads to go so I want them and you don't have to make a huge hole you just want it big enough big enough for the brad to come in without because they're just going to be decorative So I'm going to put two brads in each faux hinge. And I use the gunmetal ones. So I need four of those. And then I'll do that again on the back side. I think with all the lights on I have right now, I would be able to see this very well, but I think Paulette did a great job designing these papers they're really like I say they're really usable I use them a ton Paulette is the designer of TLC creates vintage um, I use them a ton for tags for backgrounds for, for all kinds of things so there's the front hinges and now I'll do the back another hole like I say you could just eyeball it I just came up with these the other day just goofing around inspired by Moira all you lovely ladies out there are so inspiring and, and so encouraging I really really appreciate all the encouragement I get you all the ideas and wonderful good times recently just finished my first journal for my very first swap it's going to be at the end of the month just before my birthday so it'll be kind of like a birthday present for, for me getting my swap partners journal there that's done so now I have some twine here that I will use as the closure now these um, what I'll do with these oh, let me close this so I don't get those everywhere what I'll do with these uh, these insides, I'll I'll cover them. Actually, I can do that right now. I can the back one. I'm gonna make a a pocket for for some more cards. I mean, there's tons of places for tags in here. But I just took another piece I made like a hinge and. Uh, cover the brads because it'll just stop it from catching on things. You don't want those brads to catch on your hands or on anything that, you know, they might rip. So you just make a couple little covers for them. The grungier looking the better, I think. I mean, I wanted this to look super grungy. That was my goal. 
on the back one I'm gonna make a pocket to go back here which will cover this one so it'll make another pocket um, okay so let's see let's add so take a piece of this is hemp string take and make my closure with and that's how I make my grungy envelope covered thingy. I don't know what you want to call it. It's um, a little portfolio it was, is the way I took it. You know, I made a little envelope portfolio. So now if um, I'm going to take and I'm going to add, I'll take the 316th hole punch on my crocodile and I'll punch a hole which will hold an eyelet since it's already doubled up. I can take a little eyelet and put in the hole to help decorate. Make sure I got the right eyelet setter on here because that would really stink if I didn't. So I'll set this eyelet. Perfect. And you can add a bulb pin. Let's see, I think I want a gold one. Well, maybe, let's go black. I haven't used many black ones. I'm go black. Saved the little box that my ink came in and covered it with some cute sunflower and honeybee paper and that's where I keep my um, my little baubles that I make and I think I'll use this one and so I'll take and put a little bead dangle on there Push your all thumbs when you're on camera. What is up with that, huh? Any other time you don't really have a problem, but you get on camera and you're all thumbs. Here we go. And there you have it. my grungy envelope portfolio. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it wasn't too crazy and confusing. Um, I hope you like and subscribe and hopefully I'll be a little bit more smooth in tutorials coming up. Uh, thank you guys so much. I hope you all have a great day.